All right, Hecarim. It's all you. Hecarim is going to put in lots of ephemerals. We got two spectral riders, two shark chariots, and a sand soldier. I'll defend these forests to the end. We will defend them to the end. So, if they don't have sharp sight, they lose. I command you to halt. And welcome, everybody here in Twitch chat. And to everybody on YouTube for some Sivir Hecarim. It's our third random champion deck of the week. We got one more after this with Aphelios LeBlanc. This one is going to be combining, um, you know, Shadow Isle Shurima. We're going to be combining Sand Soldiers with our other Ephemeral allies, right? Because Hecarim wants us to attack with seven Ephemeral allies. And we have some Ephemerals in Shadow Isles. You know, we got Saplings, we got Sharks. But then with Shurima being our other region, we have some other good ephemerals. We can have Waking Sands uh, with the get us the Sandstone Charger, and we can have Sand Soldiers. We'll have some Dune Keepers, and one Emperor's dies in here that whenever we attack, we get a Sand Soldier attacking. Um, and that's going to help out. The Emperor's dies with the Shark Cherry. It's a nice little combo where if we attack with anything, we put the Sand Soldier into play, which will bring the Sharks back. I thought that could be a cool combo to have. Also a good combination with Shark Chariot is Ruthless Predator, right? Because we can turn Shark Chariot into basically a 5-1 challenger, you know, with the Ruthless Predator. Um, so that's really cool. Or if, if we don't need to give it the plus two plus zero, we can give the plus two plus zero to some other unit and then still have the Shark Chariot challenge. I thought that could be like a nice combination. Also, Ruthless Predator is great with Curse Keeper, right? Make Curse Keeper a 3-1 challenger. It kills something. Now you get the escaped abomination afterwards. So I thought Ruthless Predator could go really well with both Curse Keeper and Shark Chariot. Uh, so we're going to try that little combo out. I also like Sapling Toss. I think this is an underrated card. It's only one mana. You get your 2-1 challenger sapling at the round start. But what this allows you to do is it gives you the ephemeral a uh, round start that allows you to open attack because a lot of times you with an aggressive deck you want to open attack this card allows you to open attack and bring sharks into play after your open attack so does the emperor's dies but you know we're gonna have a couple more of those sapling tosses also we had other vulnerable with with uh, merciless hunter of course sivir is another card that loves uh ruthless predators we got that rampaging bakai an underrated five mana card we should be slaying four units hopefully with like you know all this stuff in here and then you, we can play this and just use this as more interaction. You know, like they play um, a poppy on round five. We play this on round, round five to kill it. That kind of thing. Like this is an underrated card. So we're going to try some rampaging Bakai's for our five mana slot. Plus that was overwhelm. One, we had room for one top end card. We're going to try Rekindler here. But if Rekindler doesn't look so good, uh, Harrowing is another great option. So you could definitely play Harrowing. Chat was kind of split on some people liking Harrowing. Some people liking Rekindler. Um, you know, so, you know, whenever we draw Rekindler, we can think, would it be better to be Harrowing? That kind of stuff. Should we have Harrowing? Like, yeah, that could easily be switched. But all right, let's give it a try. Let's try out our Sivir Hecarim deck. Here we go. Playing against LeBlanc, Freljord, probably a Yeti deck. That would be my guess. And so they're probably going to be trying to attack us with a whole bunch of yetis. That doesn't sound very appealing. All right, we're gonna send all this back. None of, I mean, Sapling Toss could kill oh, a LeBlanc, I suppose. Got him. Mm. So I want to make that trade because I want them to not have two yetis in play for the eight cost yeti. These old eyes still see far and clear. Far and clear, both. Okay. Before the curse keeper, I was planning on just playing the shark cherry at this round and then just ravenous butcher afterwards. Merciless hunter. We'll have Merciless Hunter next round. Yes, the 
torches. So if I go, if I ravenous butcher sacrifice the curse keeper, I get the four two. That they they love having that sentry block the four two. And I don't want to give them something that they love that easily. We're gonna be a little patient. Look at that patience paying off. Okay. That allows me to block the 3-3. Three, three. I am not planning on blocking the 5-5. Five, five. I hope they don't have... Nothing's lost. It's just waiting to be found. And you won't believe what we found today. Don't. Cool. They don't have the 8 mana Yeti. Good, good, good. Alright, so that's 3, 4, 5 mana. Wow, this is going to level up from... <laughs> okay, so they, they should have spells, like troll chants, that kind of stuff. Probably need all this to strike, right? Because Alright, so if we're at 6 right now, 16, 20, 20... Yeah, I need actually everything to, to strike, so it doesn't... If I have Sivir challenge the 5-5, five five, then a troll chant that makes this like a 5-7, my Sivir dies, and I don't love that. Looks like... Okay, maybe they're going to do that anyway, and just be able to kill Sivir and keep theirs alive, yeah. Troll chance quality card. Alright, we put a good amount of pressure on them, they're down to 11. Quick hands make quick work. Line up. Hmm. The Emperor commands the land obey. Sapling toss is really nice here, allowing me to open attack. And bring the shark back. Step lightly. This will be quick. So this could be eight damage coming in. Still eight damage coming in. If I want to black spear any of these, we love it when they run. Maybe just black spear the three three. Man, if only we could have a hecarim. I love a hecarim right about now. Was that Stalking Shadows? No, it was Whisper Words, okay. The best lies are beautiful. Doesn't really make any sense not to attack with. LeBlanc, I don't think. There you are. Oh. I 
guess you. What? No, no, no. You first. And I know I'm going to be challenging you, so you there. And then you can go. I don't know. Maybe I just do that. And then try to black spear to kill the enraged yeti. Steady now. Yeah, that that just makes the most sense. gone through a lot of cards and only have one champion. That's not so good. Could really use some heck around. Too many yetis over there. Heck around? Oh, another one drop. Drawing a whole lot of small things. The desert by my side. In fact, you could say that we've drawn all the small things. You're dead meat. All right, come on, Hecarim. Hecarim. No, not Hecarim. Yeah, they've had too much card draw. GG's. All three whisper words. He's vulnerable this round. Could use a harrowing right now, but really we need Hecarim. Can't go through half the deck and can never find it. Can never find it. A Hecarim, but unfortunately they found all three Whisper Words. Yeah, here you are, Hecarim. A little late. A little late. We shall see. Look out for Reavers. Yeah, Hecarim's a 5-6 now, so that's that's really nice having that extra point of health. No surprise there. A little late. Our deck actually looked pretty good. We got Whisper Words to death. Trundle Trindamir, that's going to be a removal heavy deck. We need. We need like our sharks in this kind of matchup. This is a matchup for the sharks. Okay, this hand is pathetic. <laughs> Shark Chariot? Okay. That's a card. These old eyes still see far and clear. Look out for Reavers! Alert the villains! Hmm. 
We need our sharks. Oh, yes. she does love they are, of course, an avalanche deck. I don't want to play... Like, I play Ravis Butcher here. We get blown out pretty bad by avalanche. We don't really need to do that. See the Nebastian border from here. Blue further, bingo. Yeah, Siver only shares positive keywords. Right, you 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 cannot. Yeah, Safeguard ephemeral our... doesn't get shared. We got it first. It's a trap. Okay. I can't really avalanche with just two mana. Or with three mana, sorry, sorry. This is why I like Sapling Toss. Nice big open attack. Good attack, good attack. We're still ahead on board. It's Trundle Trindamir that we're facing. Honor is the rest on a dull blade. I would really like, I really want to play, like, I kind of assume that they're going to be casting Avalanche. And I really would have liked to, after Avalanche, play Rampaging Bakai at the Trundle. We're just going to really do that. So that's 5 damage. You know, just mana, you know, like, just mana wise and everything can really do that. Alright, so each one of these is 50-50. There's five of them. We need to hit three of the five. Three of the five. Go to Trundle, please. One, two, three. Yes! Exactly three out of the five. Perfect. Stop. Love the Hecarim draw. Alright, that's probably game. I think that's game. Cool. They needed a one mana unit to block. You know, maybe they had like an Omen Hawk or something. Or, yeah, they need like a one mana blocker. There we go. Good job, Hecarim. Alright, so yeah, a lot of things lined up perfectly there. That sapling toss was great. The Hecarim was great. That was that was awesome. That's what we want our deck to do. Karma Senna. So they're going to want fast speed, double up the spells with Karma, and then also have it be fast speed. Rampaging Bakai could be good against the champions, but I think I'm going to mulligan the 5 and the 6. I wonder if I should keep Hecarim. Sharks. No sharks. This is again another control deck, so again another good shark matchup. Step lightly. I feel like if I play Emperor's Dies right here... Like, if I would have played that first before attacking, then they would have used, like, 
file feast or go hard or you know anything and would have killed my treasure seeker and then I would not have been able to attack. That's how I. F that's what I feel. What would happen? But of course, who actually knows what what would happen? All right, I'll just I'll just save three spell mana. They waste three spell mana. Just take the pass. I don't have that much going on anyway. The order rewards its faithful. Quick hands make quick work. Hunter. They cannot hide. Man, I really don't have much. Sapling toss. Catalog of regrets. We love it when they run. It's a great card to go with go hards. That's too bad. They'll put another Withering Whale in their hand for next round. Could play Hecarim, I guess. Yeah. I guess we could. We got Rekindler. So we know they have a fleeting withering whale chilling right there. I could just open an attack from here. We we don't have any sharks, do we? No, 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 we don't have a shark, but we have a number. So that that would just be six out of seven, so this would not level up. Otherwise I play Sivir. If I play Sivir, they could have Go Hard plus Ruination. But then I have Rekindler next round. The rust on a dull blade. I think I can play Sivir. One goes down, thousands to go. Gonna find a gift for an Ecton, right, Arda? Hunt down. Night. I've only dealt 10 damage so far. This right here, I put him down to two. Like, that 4 one's definitely dead. I'm putting that in front of the Senna, you know, trying to maximize the damage that I do to them. All their spells are fast speed anyway, so I could have taken the time to play, like, Waking Sands and stuff first. But then if I, I do that, you know, then they could kill the Hecarim right away. Alright, so this is going to put them down to 8... Yeah, maybe I should have done that. Maybe I should have played Waking Sands first before attacking. I just can't really do anything about this or this turn it against them. Okay. We are the light. We are the dark. We are alive. I think I should have played Waking Sands before attacking. Because that because Waking Sands also would have threatened to be number seven. For Hecarim. That's obviously really, really important. So I think I messed up there. My hand is pretty ugly. Oh. 
Looks like I'm ready. Bye bye. Everyone's a garden. So that's slay number three. Ready to fire. Darkness and light. I'll be surprised if we win this, but it's still possible. Okay. Well, I'll be surprised if we do, but you never know. Planning on rekindler this round. Good that that concussed plum kind of got wasted. Boom. Face me. Keep your distance. Never any sharks. Could be going after the Senna instead, but it's just not too likely that that works. But I'd have to, you know, fight Senna with this, then fight Senna with this, but then each one of these go down to like one health. I don't really like them going down to one health. I think that's a pretty likely chance that they they just grabbed Ruination. Slow speed. I guess they would also have go hard for slow speed. We'll see if they have packer bags or not. Not really any reason to play the sapling toss. Yeah, I guess we shall see. I feel like I could have played that game a lot better, but it was really that that one round, whenever I uh, you know had the Hecarim attacking. 
attacking. I had to play the 5-2 first. That, that's, I was frustrated with that game the whole time after that. Yeah, I was very frustrated with, with myself that whole game after that, and we, we didn't really have another chance. Like, that was our one time, like, whenever... Um, all their spells were fast speed anyway, so, like, open attacking wasn't even valuable because of that. Man, now we have, like, this hand would have been so perfect last game. Right? Like, these Shark Chariots against these control decks are the best card against the control decks. They would have been perfect last game, but against Misfortune Quinn, now we get Shark Chariots? We don't really need Shark Chariot against Misfortune Quinn. So we need blockers. Can we race them? We probably can't race them, right? Alright, I'm going to keep this hand for science. I don't know if this actually works against Misfortune Quinn. We're going to keep it for science. Further. Bingo. Better to have these trade than they play a misfortune and they just get to kill the two one for free. Wow, they didn't attack the second time. Wow. I don't really know why, but I'll take it. This allows me to play Black Spear post combat. Or it wants to be on. Ooh, where are you at? Three out of four. It's always three out of four. I don't think this is gonna work, right? Like they haven't been playing other stuff, so they have to be holding like Rangers Resolves and Sharp Sights and that kind of stuff. So it'd be better just to go for the two one. I could see that maybe being better just going for the two one. Yeah. Yeah, we're just gonna go for the two one. Just like hunting thresher geese. All right, Hecarim. It's all you. Hecarim is going to put in lots of ephemerals. We got two spectral riders, two shark chariots, and a sand soldier. So one Hecarim fills the board. I'll defend these forests to the end. We. We'll defend them to the end. So, if they don't have sharp sight, they lose. I command you to halt. That's a good sign. That's a good sign. They need sharp sight on the Genevieve and block Hecarim and have Hecarim dies to get rid of the buff on all those, but they didn't have it. Alright, two and two. And we're playing against some landmarks. Okay, so the attack token round two and four. This thing's definitely gone. I think we're gonna keep the rest. We don't have like a great Emperor's Dies hand right now, but we can draw into it. We don't have a great Curse Keeper hand right now either, but we can 
again, draw into it. Okay, the Shark Chariot helps out that Ember's dies. And the Ruthless Predator helps out the Curse Keeper. So those both worked out just fine. Yeah, Hecarim Sivir. Yeah, we got like Vulnerables with Ephemerals. Yep, yep. So today's, on, on Fridays here, what we do is we have like, we have a wheel and we spin the wheel with all the champions in the game and it just randomly gives us combinations of two champs then we build the deck. And so we got Sivir and Hecarim <laughs> to go along together. So, now, so we built a deck with those two in mind. And I think it has looked pretty good. Gonna find a gift for an Ecton, right, Arda? We've ran into a lot of control decks and we've not drawn the best with them, but I think that we have had like some good combinations. Uh, okay. We're gonna have to play you. We have to play you so we get the shark. They're going Unraveled Earth. That unravel. This is like a really, really bad time for Unraveled Earth, just because we know one of them, one of them would just be eaten up by the shark anyway. So now we're gonna have, or I guess they they both would have been eaten up by the shark and the sand soldier. I would, I just played this thing, but we could have had them both eaten up. Yeah, the sand soldier and the shark. I don't even need to have this curse keeper out the vulnerable. I forgot about the sand soldier for a second. Nothing will stand in my way. Nothing at all? That's not very much stuff. Oh yes! She does love me! Man, we have so many different options here. Do we want to play stuff before attacking or nah? Yeah. You've got a problem. They can get like a 5-4, a 5-3, a and a 2-4. They play Desert Naturalist blowing up their landmark. That was the best thing they could do. Goes my 1-1. One, one. Okay, how are we doing? Nine? That's not very much. That's right. Run. Basically, I'm trying to decide whether to Ruthless Predator to challenge Zareth or Black Spear. And I kind of think Black Spear is the way to go. Black Spear allows me to uh, respond. If they have another Ancient Hourglass, it's going to be better. You are nothing, fool. Time is money. Yep. Okay. So I can either kill the Zareth or kill Zillion, and killing Zareth is definitely the way to go. We just got a donation. Did I hear that right? Yeah, donation! Awesome. Alright, that'll do. Once we kill that Zareth, they were done. Another victory to fill the coffers. GG's. Alright, so our deck came back and won the last two, ended up with a good three and two record. I really liked how our deck looked. I thought I thought the shark chariots 
with this different stuff looked pretty good. Uh, we did struggle a little bit with the Rampaging Bakai, but I think I like it overall, but we were, we kind of played some control matchups that didn't have as many units, uh, which made it more difficult for that thing to slay. Uh, Rekindler, eh, it was alright, but maybe, maybe it would have been better just to play Harrowing um, instead of Rekindler. That's you know, just the other option there. If you like heroin, go ahead and, you know, definitely go go through with that. I could see that being more powerful. Um, we didn't always have a lot of things to kill with the caretaker. But, you know, we did we did okay. Uh, yeah, I think, I think our deck looked good. The first game against the Yetis, we just, you know, drew all of our low-end stuff. And, and then I think our, our deck didn't look as good as, like, what it normally could have been with having some Hecarims. Um instead but i liked it i liked ruthless predator with shark chariot and curse keeper i thought that was pretty cool the sapling tosses were nice really our shark chariots were awesome and that was that was the thing is we really built this you know with the shark chariot deck and the games that we had shark chariots we were better than the games when we didn't that's for sure all right but there we go sivir hecarim i think that was a good successful random champion uh deck those of you all watching later on youtube Hit that like button over there, and as always, leave those comments. Hopefully y'all enjoyed this. If you're looking for a Hecarim deck, feel free to give it a try and let me know how it goes for you. Hopefully it uh, goes pretty good. But that's it for this video. So as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next one.